All right, welcome back to Everyday Arays. Today I decided to swap the seats in my 95 extended cab for the Ranger. So this is a original. I already pulled the passenger seat though out of the truckco and uh, started doing uh, some uh, modifications. But I haven't start, I haven't pulled the driver's seat, so I figured I'll make the video, maybe to help some other people with the swap. Oh, so this seat and that seat came out of a 2012 Mitsubishi Eclipso convertible. They are much better than. Ford Ranger seat those way more comfortable and they were on sale so I decided to pull the trigger and now I'm going to put it in my truck so let's get started with the step one -o is to remove -o the driver side seat which is gonna be different from a standard cab. So, step one is to remove the rusty bolts. So I'm gonna spray some uh, WD-40 on that uh, to make it easier. The passenger seat though came out okay, no problem. So these are 13 millimeter bolts, uh, same as a half inch. So, let me go ahead and remove those front two bolts. And then, see how nice the seat is? And then, the back bolts, were, which are hidden under these covers. So, let me get the tulos and I'll get it out. So, use a 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet and do this for 10 minutes on four bolts and the seat though will come out all right so i removed the front bolts from here and from here they came out pretty good even though there's a lot of rust yeah i got lucky now let's scoot the seat forward and start working on the back I think I'm gonna jump in the passenger side and work from there all right so I just bent these out of the way and there is a lot less rust on the bolts I'm gonna put my ratchet 13 millimeter socket on it just like so and start turn it for another five minutes on both of them alright alright so I removed the two back bolts bada bing bada boom but the seat will not come out because of these seat belt tracks so I try removing it here and it's pretty much stuck so i've looked at the option number two is there were two 10 millimeter bolts one here and another one was on here so i'm going to do the same thing you can see one there and then the other one somewhere over here there you go there it is so for that I'm going to need a 10 millimeter socket just like so and I'm going to put whoever gets a ratchet is pretty smart so I'm going to put ratchet on there and I'm going to take it out.
Repeat the same process for the one closer to the front of the seat though. Alright, so I've removed the nuts right under there and the bolt over here. Now is to yank the seat out of the truck. But don't just throw it yet. Come on. Seato is out. Alright, so I got all the Seatos out of the truck. -o. This is a driver's seat from the Rangero. And this is a driver's seat from the Mitsubishi. Passenger seat, driver's seat. Alright, so I put them side by side though. So, you know, to have a clearer picture. And as you can see, the mounting points that bolted to the truck are different than the points that were bolted to the Mitsubishi. So here's how I unbolted the tracks. This is a four track. This is a Mitsubishi. And this is a passenger seat. So I looked in there and it seems all right, you know, got a grind some rivets and remove this piece away from the tracks because they're rusty and bolted or welded or whatever to these tracks not use this part and uh, the plan was pretty simple but then I got the driver's seat and this track is way different than that track so now I gotta come up with a new plan because this is actual track and I want to mount the seats at the same height driver's seat and then passenger seat so now I've got to decide I'm gonna unbolt everything that I can Remove all these airbags, connectors, or hide them away somewhere. And then, come up with the plan. So the driver's seat might be different than the passenger seat. I might have to use these locations to mount to the this track right here. So I'm going to grind this rivet and remove them away from the seat though and then uh, try to get rid of all this rust and then either bolt it or weld it to this track as you can see that that's the part that moves right here and then put it in the truck and make sure it's in the center if it's not going to be in the center I'm going to be in some trouble so, time to get to work, and I'll let you know what my plan is. I still don't know yet. I'm doing it the old school, pre-95, where you didn't Google anything. You just did it. Alright, so magically, they don't just bolt in. Surprise, surprise, Mitsubishi and Ford. Anyways... I've decided to start drilling the uh, these rivets. So once I drill them out, I'll be able to remove the brackets from the tracks. And uh, there's no coming back from this. No coming back. These junky seats are not going back in the truck. So, I'm going to have to make them fit these babies, these nice babies. So, time to continue drilling those rivets and these I'll have to grind because I can't get to them with the drill. Alright, it's a success. I was able to grind all the rivets. Let me show you a better view. This rivet, this rivet, that one, and that one. 
eight altogether. I was able to separate the track. So now I gotta find a way to bolt the sucker or weld the sucker to the seat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this one and then start to figure out how to bolt them in or weld them in to the seats. Alright, so I got the frame separated from the seat of the uh, Ranger. Next, I'm going to drill out all these rivets and remove these mounting points along with this. And I'm going to use three bolts here on each side to bolt to the frame. I'm probably going to need some kind of a uh, metal to combine those two together because this one is much skinnier than this. So I'm going to continue with the work. Hi, that's like a day 24 of my seat install in my Trago truck is getting rusty it's been a while this uh, install hasn't been too easy so anyways I had to go to the store and get some three-quarter inch five-foot square tubing BAM it looked pretty strong enough then I cut two pieces off like that they're gonna go they're gonna bolt in to here here and there come on go back do it, do it. there we go then I'll be able to either bolt in or weld in the stock Ford Ranger seat bracket. Well, I drilled the holes just like so, but how do I get the nuts in there? Kapow! Look at that. Would you just look at that? Would you just look at that? Now, I am able to get hit the socket right in there and tighten the nuts. So I'm going to do the same thing to this bar and then I'm going to put this back in the truck and I'm going to adjust how far forward I want this bracket to be and the same with the uh, left and right and then I'll be able to drill some more holes and bolt it up. So now I've got to drill the same holes in this one. So I can put nuts on the back of it. Alright. Let's get to work. Alright. So I drilled all four big holes. Put the nuts in there. Original nuts that came on the seat. And now. I am able to. Tighten them down. Secure the brackets to the seat belt. One. I'm not going to tighten them too tight because it's all a trial and error. Come on, go in. Where's your problem? Don't you want to go in? Alright. I'll do this with you later. Well, 
you get the idea all right so i put the original seat bracket back in the truck in this filthy truck I like the carpet it's beautiful it's so beautiful some rusty bolts and some bees all right so next i'm going to put the seat on there and uh make sure it clears this bump and clears the tunnel and sits straight that way i'm not sitting here or i'm not sitting here i'm sitting right in the center from the steering wheel so let's get this party started all right so i put the seat in the truck i moved the seat track all the way forward so the seat would be all the way to the back uh, because i wanted as far back as possible uh, I don't really care how how much forward it comes in because you know it's got enough travel uh, even if you're five feet tall you'll be able to fit even when the seat all the way back so I marked the center so it would clear the sides would be in the center and then I've marked this one right here you can barely see it but it's good enough I just marked it on one side because these holes are about the same so pretty close to the same now I'm going to try to bolt it up to just the front bar and then bolt the seat track with the seat in the truck and sit down and double check everything if I like the way it fits then I'm gonna get bigger bolts and bolt it to the back and to the front and then put the seat back in the truck and jump around on it and see if it's got any flex if it's got any flex i'm going to have to reinforce some of these bars just in case because the seat belts where's the seat belt the seat belt buckle actually bolts to the seat so the seat has to be very secure to the uh to the floor in case of a crash because uh, otherwise if it's not secured and I get into a car uh, and I hit something at a high rate of speed which is not really possible with the Ford Ranger uh, I'll be flying with the seat <laughs> and the seat belt still attached to me so that's not a not a good thing so all right down to get the work and continue this 24 day saga of installing Mitsubishi seats in a Ford Ranger. Alright, so I've bolted the two bars that I've made to the frame to the tracks of the Mitsubishi seat. Then I temporarily put a couple of self tapping screws just on the front because that's where majority of uh, the force pulling force is just to uh, fit it in the truck and see if it clears everything and it's in the center so let's go ahead and put the sucker in bolt it to the truck and see how it looks all right so put the bolts in the front and I'll put the bolts in the back so it's semi secured now I'm testing out how it fits so one thing that I was worried about is this piece right here would hit here or this piece right here would hit here so let's move it all the way back and it clears the seat belt, not by much, but clears it. And I can't even stick a finger in there, it's so tight, but it clears it, so that's good to go. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna use that, but let's look on the other side. All right, so. That bracket clears the carpet. It's very tight, but it 
everything's clear and uh, it's pretty straight let's see if it'll clear the door and there's plenty of room between the door and the seat next thing is to open the door I'm glad I have the window down and see how it feels all right my feet are right in the middle it fits perfect and it's really really comfortable and it's just right all I need is to pull the seat forward about a click and I'll be able to uh, use the clutch so I can probably grow another two three inches and still be okay yeah it's good all right so now I'm going to remove the seat and I'm gonna permanently mount uh, the seat to the brackets and then I'll be able to get rid of all this rust and uh, bolt the seat in the truck and start working on the passenger side after that done I gotta register the truck and then I'm going to get rid of this carpet because it's just straight up nasty I'm gonna get rid of that radio because it's a broken radio and uh, if I can find uh, a rubber mat that would be that would be great because I'm not too crazy about having a carpet in the truck so this looks good this looks very good oh yeah I am very happy it was uh, worth all the uh, cutting and grinding and drilling and cutting and grinding so I'm gonna pull it off and uh, finish it up all right I tightened up uh, the bracket bolted it to the seat frame you can see bracket one bracket two held by uh, m6 by one nuts and then uh, I bolted it to the seat frame bolted the seat frame back in there for mock-up everything uh, looking good it clears everything plenty of room I just took it for a drive and it drives like a completely new truck it sits a little bit higher than the factory seat so I uh, feel like you're in a bigger truck and uh, I'm gonna do the same thing uh, on the passenger seat, I'm going to bolt two three-quarter inch uh, square tubing and then going to bolt the square tubing to the bracket. Same concept, but for now, it's social distancing level expert. Uh, while all the seats are out, look at all that nasty crap I decided to bring in of trash yeah we're gonna try to vacuum all this shit out because it's uh it's pretty nasty in here maybe I can save the carpet besides you know some of these spots in the meantime I want to get rid of all this trash so let's get the party started king of trash well, king of trash didn't do much work. Well, took all the small pieces out. It's still filthy, so it's time to rock and roll with some 4-9 carpet cleaner. Oh, yeah. I guess I should have read the directions, but we'll do it later. Looking good. See if it works. Alright. 
said, let it sit for three minutes or something like that. Six inches done. Generously apply. I oh, sure did. Look at that. Generously everywhere. I think I emptied the whole can. Might have to go get some more. I'm gonna have to wait about 10 minutes. Cause this is nasty crap. Ooh, that sound is so. I'm about to fall asleep listening to that. But I, hopefully it'll turn out good. Alright, so I'm done with the driver's seat. I've had to use three quarter square tubing to get this tubing connected to the track of the seat. Then I used uh, six millimeter M6 bolts to hold the track from the Ford Ranger to the square tubing. Uh, I had to do a bunch of measuring, make sure uh, it was all good. I had to measure it like five, six times because I didn't want to uh, drill a bunch of holes in the uh, square tubing and make it weak. And uh, it fit pretty good. So now I have to work on the passenger seat and the passenger seat is a little bit different. So uh, you can see what I'm gonna do, I think, on the passenger seat, I'm gonna mount square tubing here and here, the same way as this one. And for the front, I'm gonna mount square tubing here using a bolt and a nut. And here, that should give me a pretty good point. And then I'm going to mount the track to the square tubing. So the track is still on this mount so got to drill out eight eight of these one two there's one over there three four five six seven eight and remove the seat mount from the uh, track from the uh, crappy seats four ranger seats so I'm just going to use a drill and take my time. I let the drilling begin. So all I do is I put the drill right in the center and I start drilling. Don't move. Alright, so <clears throat> what I did first is I drilled out the centers or close to the center of the rivets with a smaller uh, drill bit. Now, what I what I did on the first one, uh, probably going to work on this one, is I uh, put the bigger uh, drill bit on there, and now I'm going to slowly drill this out. Everybody can see. All right, ready? And put a lot of pressure on it. Boom, and the hole, the whole rivet comes out. So now, it'll be easier to get it out. So now I have to repeat everything for all eight, except for the ones in the corner. They're kind of hard to get to. So, but I'm going to try it anyways, because it's not at a straight angle. So you, you, you're going to need a, a longer uh, drill bit. So let me get them all out and separate the frame. All right. Alright, so I got all the rivets out. And next is time to separate the track from the seat mount. The way I do it, I call it, use a, uh, this technique called the 
little Russian persuasion. You take a small Russian screwdriver. In America, it's called a, a, a big screwdriver. In, in Russia, it's called a small screwdriver. And uh, you take a, s a small Russian hammer. It looks like a big American hammer. And then you stick it right in here and you hit it with the hammer really good. Or you can just twist it. It depends how strong you are. Alright, let me see if I can hit it with the hammer that hit me on my knee. As you can see, it's separating. Now I just gotta put it down. The trick is not to use, not too much Russian persuasion technique so you don't bend the, uh, the track. So I just... <sighs> this one's being a little difficult. I'm going to need two hands for this one. Alright. So, separated the track. Seat mount from the track. And that's going to garbage. And this will go on the seat. Now, I got this seat right next to that one. That way, I can move, move it all the way forward or all the way back. And I can um, line up the seat track to this one. That way both seats move uh, back and forth the same distance. So, uh, time to do some more cutting. Alright, so it's time to make a bracket for the passenger seat. And since they're both identical and they mount to the same location, all I have to do is mirror this bracket location to this one so I pulled up both brackets all the way to the top seat all the way back and I've got this bracket so I'm going to measure it and make sure that the it's the same distance from the tracks since it's all the same now I'm going to let's see the bars I'm gonna have to go into a different location. On this seat is a little bit different, so I'm gonna mount one bar here. I think it's gonna miss the pull handle. And the second one's gonna be mounted to these uh, two studs. So one here and one here. And then I'm going to drill holes just like this one and bolt the frame that bolts to the truck. I'm going to bolt it to the tracks. So, let's get to work. Time to cut the uh, three-quarter inch tubing into correct length bars. And uh, get this project done and over with. All right, I got them cut. So, on this one, the bottom one. Since I'm going to use original studs, I'm going to do the same thing as right here. I'm going to cut small holes for the studs and then I'm going to cut the bigger ones so I can put the socket in there. On this one, I'm just going to cut two small holes and I'm going to bolt them up like so. The bolt is going to go from the back to the front and it's going to... I'm going to put the nut on this side, on this side, so it should be fairly, fairly easy. Alright, let the work be, uh, continue. Alright, so I've cut the brackets, and I've tightened them up. i got the metric nuts on this side and standard bolts on this side, just because they were cheaper. Now, I have to measure the distance 
between this and the outer edge of the uh, which we'll call it track and do the same thing here and measure the distance from the inside to this side since the brackets look pretty much identical and then I'll be able to get them installed I think they're gonna be from the look of it just like this I'm gonna drill some holes uh oh we got a problem we've got a problem <laughs> I don't have enough room for this track. Ah. It's too wide. You can see it's gonna go like this. I'm short. So, change of plans. No, I can't move that. Darn. Fail, that's a big fail on my part. Uh, I gotta come up with a new plan now. Alright, so I messed up a little bit. That bar, the lower bar, is way too low for this bracket. So if I was gonna put it like this, I'm just shy of about an inch. So I had to do something else. So now the plan is. I welded, uh, uh, cut some of the tubing I have left over, and I'm going to cheat a little bit. So, I'm going to make this bracket even stronger. So what I'm doing is, uh, I measured the difference. So for example, from here, from the center of this to this is about three quarter of an inch. So I'm going to put this three-quarter of an inch from the center and then from here to to the center of this hole is two and a quarter of an inch so on the outside I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this bar two and a quarter out then I'm going to utilize these already holes that are already in the bracket to cut the holes in this tubing and bolt them in. It's actually going to be a lot stronger. So, time to uh, pull my welder out and get him welded. Alright, so I tacked the bars in so I can pull them off and uh, completely Weld it really good so nothing falls off like a seat from my truck with the passenger attached to it. That would not be good. In most cases it would not be good. Some cases it's okay. So I got this one three quarter of an inch away from the center, which would be this bolt on the strap the same way as this one. And this one I got two two and a quarter I believe much the same distance from that center to here so now I can untangle this mess so now these holes will match up to the bar like so and I'll be able to drill and bolt this bracket in same distance I'll measure it on both sides it lines up just beautifully so time to finish it up and put the seats in and uh, go for a drive all right so I'll weld it all four corners to make the bars I just drilled two holes for now are going to fit 
in these holes, hole one or hole two. I am not gonna use this hole because it's too close together. I'm going to drill one somewhere in here and one in here. But first I'm gonna bolt this to my seat with two bolts. It's all mounted just with two bolts. I don't have any nuts in here. So it's moving around, but I'm gonna bolt it up and I'm gonna see how it's gonna bolt in to the truck. And uh, if everything looks good, I'm going to drill two more holes. I'm gonna drill two more holes and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, mount the track to the mount and uh, tighten everything up and uh, install the seats. So hopefully it fits. All right, so I bolted the seat. Two problems, well, three problems. Problem number one is I have to cut this piece off because it's hitting a door panel. Can't close the, uh, the door. Problem number two is this handle it's supposed to do this it hits the seat belt and this plastic piece so there's really nobody gonna be in the back so I'm gonna have to I'm just gonna cut it off I don't need this it attached to this handle so no problem and uh, let's see those are two problems. It is on the tight side. It's really it's really close, but everything fits nicely on this side. No problems whatsoever, and I'll be able to get a nice uh, center console installed. And there should be plenty of room. So it's it's getting dark out. So and I sort of cleaned the carpet, whatever came out of it. So. I'm going to have to tackle it some other day. Anyways, I'm going to cut this thing off. Uh, maybe tilt the seat slightly towards that way, the back part. I can still slot the holes in the mount and move it that way to get a little bit more clearance here. Because it's, I mean, it's tight. So, the seat belt could actually go in this in this piece right here it is so close so and uh but it was pretty it was really really close i didn't even think about this thing so let me pull it out and uh before it gets too too dark cut that stuff off along with that handle and uh it'll be done it it looks and feels pretty good, just like the driver's seat. So this seat's a little bit cleaner. I still haven't cleaned the seat, but I didn't feel like doing it because the seats are laying on the floor, getting some dirt on them. Once I install them, I'll vacuum them out, and they'll be as good as new. All right, so the seat didn't quite fit last time or last night, so I had to... Uh, we do it, I had to slot this bolt hole and move the track slightly. Uh, because of that, I couldn't use now these holes. So I had to drill new holes. So I got one drilled here and two right here and one over here. Bolted it up. Now the seat's going to sit closer by about, about an inch. That should do it. So... Uh, Let's go ahead and bolt it in and see if it works like I think it, w it should. Alright, so I bolted the seat with four 13mm bolts. Two in the front and two in the back. There's one. There's two. A couple things I did is I cut this handle off because it was getting too close to the seat belt into this plastic piece. Uh, the second thing I did is I cut this piece off because it 
had no purpose, but it was coming into contact with the uh, door panel. Now, everything clears. So first, let's see. We got plenty of distance from the back to this plastic piece. Uh, another problem I had is this was sitting too close. Now there's like almost two fingers, which is perfect. Uh, let's see. I had to... What did I have to do? I had to cut this bracket at the angle so it would clear the uh, carpet since I had to slightly move the whole thing towards the center. And uh, let's see if it clears everything. So, it clears the door, it clears everything, and there's room for a nice center console, which I'll probably do, not today, because I just wanted the seats in, they look pretty good, it's in there, now it's time to go for a drive, man this view is way better than it was before. It just looks comfortable. Let's try it out. Mm. Oh my. It feels comfortable. It feels like I'm sitting lower than in the other, uh, than with the other seats. My hand is pretty much straight. And I've got, I've got about six inches now between my head and the roof. So. That's a plus. Now I can I can actually slide the seat forward. Man, feels pretty good. Now I won't take it for a drive. feels pretty good. It feels like I uh, didn't think it was going to make that big of a difference, but it feels like I'm driving a completely different truck. It drives so smoothly. So. Alright, so. Uh, would I do it again? Yes. This mod was worth every any, even though it took a while and uh, had to do a lot of drilling, grinding, and bolting, uh, it feels and looks pretty pretty darn good for a total investment of under $100. That's the seats, bolts, nuts, uh, and uh, everything else. So, if you thinking about doing something like this these uh the seats were out of a 2012 mitsubishi uh, eclipse uh, convertible uh, i would highly recommend it unless you don't know how to cut drill and grind then i would recommend going with the easier solution such as ford explorer seats so thank you guys for watching i've got more things coming uh, come and check out my channel. Have a good day.